On today's show, Big Fish Dreams Come True. Got him? Yep. This angler likes Mille Lacs Lake's lesser known prey. The art of vintage boat building best expressed through the work of this man. I love the history of wood boats. That's exactly what we're looking and for. And a recipe that might make your mouth water just a little bit. Minnesota Bound. Presented by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems. Hi everybody, Bill and I welcome you to Minnesota Bound. You know, a lot of anglers this time of year like to chase both walleyes and panfish. That's right, but Travis Frank met an angler who hunts a different type of prey. Yeah, maybe prey that is a little less popular, but pike are no less fun. Mille Lacs Lake is Minnesota's second largest inland body of water, spanning 132,000 acres in size. Year-round, Mille Lacs draws in anglers by the thousands in search of our state fish. Look at that. Woo! Yeah, it's a walleye factory that continuously makes controversial headlines. But once Minnesota's walleye season closes in February, anglers leave and the giant lake goes silent. That's when Chris Fusco hits the ice. That's, that's my jam right there. I love fishing Mille Lacs. He's one of the few anglers that cash in on Mille Lacs Lake's forgotten fish during a forgotten season. Yep, this is the spot. Let's get all the gear out and start drilling holes. Let's drill one right about here. Oh, these are lively. I'm, I'm hoping for a big pipe. The trap is set. I feel like walleyes are a little bit overrated. They're fun to catch, but uh, once you fight a big pike in there, it's, it's a little bit more of a pull. This fishing trip feels more like a hunt. Good luck, and by good luck, I, <laughs> I mean bad luck. Hand-to-hand <laughs> -hand combat with them, so, you know, it's you versus the fish there. Mille Lacs Lake grows some of Minnesota's largest northern pike, and Chris can prove it. It's an adrenaline rush, I like it. She's moving ready. Inside our hub, we quietly watch for passing pipe. Just a waiting game out here. Luckily, our wait doesn't last long. Here we go. Show me how it's done, Master. Got him? Yep. Nope, nope. Oh. What happened? Holy cow, did it take line. No! Chris! <laughs> hey, the only good thing about that is that fish might still be hungry. Right. He didn't get dinner. A lot of lakes have pike in them, but not many of them have the size that this does. Minnesota's DNR Fisheries Chief, Brad Parsons, agrees. Yeah, the pike fishery is really special on Mille Lacs. In our test nets, over 3% of the fish that were caught were over 40 inches, which is really rare for Minnesota, and even over 30% were over 30 inches. Exactly why they decided to extend the season for Mille Lacs Lake's northern pike. The population is in great shape. There's no signs it's being overexploited, so that's why we want to allow these opportunities. This lake's massive size typically means a late ice out, which still protects the trophy pike during their spring spawn. Flake, we got flake right here. Another flake. Yep, that might be a pike. Set it, set it, set it, set it. Got him? Nope. Oh, how is that possible? <sighs> Son of a. Got, got him? Yep. This might be a pike. Oh, oh. big wallet. 
Walleyes are fun too, that's a bonus, but I'd rather catch the one big one. Chris knows catching the big one takes patience and persistence. It's the hunt for that, you know, and it's, it's a lot tougher to get the big one versus a bunch of little ones. Here we go. This is it. I'm gonna rub the lucky hat. The moment. Got it. Feels like a decent one. Oh, uh, yeah, he feels pretty good. Big head shakes. Oh my God. Oh, this is a big ball eye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. Here you go. <laughs> That's a good one to end, it, end the day off. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Hey, it's not a northern, but that is a beautiful thing. On a 132,000 acre big fish factory, Chris's next northern pike trophy will have to wait for another day. Sweet, good job. Thanks to Mille Lacs Lake's extended season, he still has plenty of time. Come back and try again. The original plans for coming up boating history unfolds in one twin cities workshop meet the man who got bit big time minnesota bound is brought to you by Connecticut water treatment systems rapala star bank and by ice castle fish houses You know, classic boats are nothing new here in Minnesota, but how their stories live on, well, one person is telling that like no other. His name, Kevin Fitzke. Be warned, if you ever enter this building, you might just get stung. Once you get bit by the boat bog, you're, you're hooked. Kevin Fitzke got zapped long ago. The boat stuff was just always an interest of mine. I definitely eat, sleep, and breathe this stuff, you know. In a way above average wood shop, Kevin slowly takes months, years, even decades off of old boats. One small scrape at a time. Lots of, lots of old varnish here. His work really quite singular, all about sharing stories. It's been in Italy the whole its whole life, so out on the salt water. In this case, the tale of an old wood boat well traveled. This is a 1960 Riva, and the model name is Florida. It's got kind of a neat little sunbed that folds out in the back here. There's a three-person bench seat up front. Being all an original woodwork on it, it obviously has seen its better days, so we're gonna redo all the decks and the, the sides and the bottom. That's what Kevin does. He restores some of the fanciest weathered boats around. We'll be getting the original upholstery from Riva to make sure it's, it's done correctly and everything, so this will be as original looking as possible. A nine month project the work of Kevin's old soul. I love the history of wood boats, so I try to spend a lot of my time that I'm not in the shop building stuff, researching it. It's neat to be able to have the opportunities like this to kind of fix these old things up and make it so other people can enjoy it and see what they used to look like back, you know, from the factory or back in the day. Fact is, restoring old boats wasn't quite enough, so Kevin paddled up a new creek, you could say. You know, a lot of it is just kind of in awe. I would say most people would say it's way better in person just because you can see the character behind it. You can really see the grain of the wood and the glossiness of that varnish on there. 
That's where I would say my ultimate passion is at, is the wooden boat building and restoration stuff. And the paddle boards are just a really fun excuse to keep doing that. A means to an end which culminates here on quiet water. It's a, just a hot rod of a boat. It's super fun to drive around. It's incredibly smooth on the water. This morning, this ride, proof that boat building stuff can sting. This particular plans that my boat is based off of was printed in the February issue of 1935's Motorboat Magazine. And so it gives you kind of an overview. This is the original plans for bug light. Yes, Kevin built the boat from scratch, literally from first board and first stainless steel screw. The name, well, you probably already figured that part out. You know, they all have a personality to them. They have, they have that character about them. I think you can really just see the, the physical soul between a wood boat compared to, you know, maybe a, a fiberglass or aluminum boat. And in the process, Kevin protects the stories. That's just what makes it that cool factor. They just, they sound cool, There's, they ride completely different. It's just kind of that experience you have, it's just, you, you can't get that with anything else. Still ahead, the art of fishing that starts in these Minnesota woods. But first, a tasty recipe for your next wild game dinner. Closed captioning is brought to you by Cast Lake Chain of Resorts. kitchen with Chef Jim Kinberg from Fire Lake Grill House and Cocktail Bar and Chef Jim I understand we're doing a little twist on some southern fried chicken but we're doing northern fried pheasants you got it sounds good to me so Chef Jim how does it make it northern versus southern the big twist is we're using wild rice flour in our flour blend okay. gives it that little extra crunch so what are the first steps I see we're soaking here in buttermilk? We do, I have some already kind of pre-marinated in the buttermilk, but you're gonna take your pheasant breast, cut them into little strips, dip them in the buttermilk. I also like to season the buttermilk with a little of your favorite hot sauce. And how long does this marinate? You can marinate overnight or at least up to an hour. So should I just grab a couple pieces and Go throw for it in the flour? Yes, buttermilk helps the uh, flour actually stick to it. It's all right, it gets a little messy. Once you got it nice and coated, kind of shake off the excess. My fingers are gonna be extra crispy. You're not cooking unless you're getting messy in the kitchen, right? So, Chef Jim, before we put these in the frying pan, is this just plain wild rice flour or are there spices added to it? We did add a little bit of spice to it. You gotta give it some flavor. There's salt, there's pepper, paprika, onion powder, and garlic powder, that's it. We've got our oil in a cast iron pan, but here's the trick. Put the tail in first. You wanna see that little bit of sizzle? and then just kind of drop it away. You don't want to splash it down or drop it towards you. So tail first, and then drop it away from you. These are really thin, so we need internal temperature of 165 degrees. With these thin little cutlets, it's gonna take us about three minutes aside. That's exactly what we're looking for. You get those golden brown edges, that tells you it's time to flip. You see we got nice golden brown on both sides. These are ready to come out. I like to put them on a paper towel and just let that extra grease kind of drip off. So now for the final touch is the secret ingredient that uh, you said might be a little hard to find, but it's vinegar powder and sriracha powder? It is. So a little hard to find, but it's delicious. Well, thank you, Chef Jim, for showing us the northern twist on northern fried pheasant. And of yeah. course, it's available here on the menu at Fire Lake. I'm digging in. Hey there, Bill Shrick, the man about the woods. You know, starting a fire in camp is a bit of an acquired skill. 
These days, so many people carry around boxes of matches or even pockets full of lighters, but there are more traditional means to starting fire, and it actually can be a fun way to challenge yourself when you're outdoors. Here's what my fire starting kit looks like, and that's the name of it. <laughs> you try and pronounce that, but it's pretty simple. It's a finished kit, and it's just got fat wood with a lot of pitch in it that's flammable. It's got a little tin of sawdust and then a... Uh, ferrous stick or a magnesium stick which is where your spark comes from and to start a fire all i need to do is get some wood chips together and then just grab a little pinch of the sawdust and drop it in the middle and i just grab that stick and i like using my camp axe just because it works really well and you start throwing sparks Just a few sparks and it fires right up. That's really a lot of fun. Try using a magnesium stick and try to build your own fires. It's really a fun challenge and it's a great skill to have when you're out in the woods. Straight ahead, a Minnesota Bound Classic all about Minnesota made dream catchers. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Treasure Island Resort and Casino. Hewitt Docks Lifts and Pontoon Lakes. And by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. Today's Minnesota Bound Classic takes my dad, Ron Shera, into the winter woods where he met Minnesota's net man. When you're busy landing a fish, the net is probably the last thing on your mind. There we go. Oh, that's a dandy. Not so for Lloyd Howderjarvey. Landing nets have to come from somewhere. In this case, Howder Jarvie is searching the woods for just the right tree, for just the right landing net. I'm always keeping my eye open, whether I'm out partridge hunting, or just walking in the woods, trout fishing in the summertime, I'm always keeping an eye peeled. No, I'm no scientist, just a, just a woodaholic. Years ago, Lloyd, the woodsmith, turned his Duluth basement into a landing net manufacturing plant. Foresters call these crusty bumps on a tree a burl. It's wood to discard, but not in Lloyd's wood-talented hands. Lloyd discovered there's hidden beauty in the unwanted burls. Spray them with water, and the wood grain comes alive. But each burl has its own quirks, you know, its own unique uh, qualities. Almost like snowflakes, um, they have their similarities, but each one of them is different. Each one, absolutely each one is different and each one will become a different handle for his landing net works of art. Handcrafted items aren't supposed to be perfect. They're not stamped out on a machine. Instead, Lloyd uses patience with wood, a little glue, and eventually the frame comes together. After some sanding, and some more sanding. You can fool your eyes, but you can't fool your fingers. And then some more sanding. Lloyd applies varnish to the handle, and the natural pattern in the wood is revealed. This is a piece of quilted maple. Very unusual figure in it. Imagine a fish landing net suitable for framing. He makes dozens of net handles a year, but it's not just a business. I enjoy what I'm doing, there's no doubt about that. It's, uh, I put a little extra effort into these, into my, into my product here. I hope it shows, I think it shows. Um, it's just an addiction for me you have to, when you get right down to it. If you think about it, Lloyd's handiwork fits right in. Some days it takes a perfect cast in a perfect setting to catch that perfect fish. Why not land it with a perfect net? That's a plump one. I still have my LDH net, a lot of memories in that thing. I bet it does. <laughs> <laughs> well, that does it for us. We'll see you back here next week. In the meantime, don't forget to introduce a kid 
to the great outdoors. The biggest catch landed in that net. A uh, 30 inch steelhead. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1 800 899 7433. To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.